سورت الانشقاق بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم از سما ان شقت وین دی ہیون ول بی اسپلٹ اسینڈر وازنت لربها وحقت اینڈ اٹ ول اوبے دا کال اف اٹس لارڈ اینڈ شورلی اٹ ہیز بین آرڈین ٹو ڈو سو اٹ ہیز ٹو لسن اینڈ اوبے وائز دا لارڈ مضبط اینڈ وین دی ارتھ ول بی اسٹریچڈ اؤٹ وَأَلْقَتْ مَا فِيهَا وَتَخَلَّتْ And it will cast outside all that is in it and will become empty. وَأَزِنَتْ لِرَبِّهَا وَحُقَّتْ And it will obey its Lord's call and surely it has been ordained to do so. Now this is again a picture of that day. Now is an ardu muddat when this earth will be stretched. We know that this world is round. If it is stretched, what will happen? It will become ecliptic, ecliptical first and then maybe straight, absolutely plain. So whatever is in it will itself come out. So that is actually a logical result of this stretching of the world. This earth will be stretched. When the earth will be stretched and it will cast outside whatever is in it. These are the dead. These are the people who are buried in it. And this is, you know, everything which it has, it will throw it out. Ya ayyuhal insan, inna ka kaadihun ila rabbika kadhan fa mulaqi. O man, surely you are ever laboring continuously and laboriously and you are sure to meet your Lord. This is a very important point. Man in this life, has to undertake labor, hard work, struggle to earn livelihood, whatever we have to do, everybody knows, to get the education, what you know, the youth coming from Pakistan, other countries, they are reading, but they are earning money, they are working, all these things. So this is lot of every human being is to work and work and work and work. But then, suddenly one day, he will find himself standing before the Lord. Now bring forth your account. What did you do? If we compare ourselves to the animals, horses, they are drawing the, whatsoever they are drawing, tangas, etc. But they are not going to be resurrected. Their tragedy ends with the death. Or, you know, the other beasts who carry load, they are working here, working hard, no doubt. But no resurrection, no questioning. But the tragedy of man is twofold. Here, you have to suffer. Sorrows after sorrows. Griefs after griefs. Man has to have these, these shocks. Hard work plus shock. But then, over and above that, إِنَّ كَكَادْيَهُ نِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ كَدْ حَنْ فَبُلَاقِهِ But the real tragedy would be when you'll have to stand before your Lord. فَأَمَّا مَنُوتِيَا كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ So as for those who will be given his record, in the right hand, فَصَوْفَ يُحَاسَ بُوْهِ سَابًا يَسِيرًا Soon will his account be taken by an easy reckoning. What is Hisab al-Yaseer? There is a hadith. The Prophet said that the account will be presented. That's all. Go. No detailed questioning. Many people from this Ummah, the Prophet said 70,000 of my Ummah, who are the mutawakkilun, who have total faith in Allah, they will have this end. So for you, hasab or hisab and yasir. Just looking into it, and that's, that's all. For so for you, hasab or hisab and yasir, for yan qalibu ila ahlihi masroorah, and he will return. After that peshi, you know, he was presented 
but now he is coming back to his family and he is happy, joyfully, that I have been saved. Vamma manutiya kitabahu varaz ahadi. And as for those who will be given the record behind his back, why? The angels will try to give him in the left hand, but they will keep their left hand back. They don't want to hold that. So they will be given from their backs. So such a man will then call for death. Let death come to me. Would that death could come to me. Would be, would that this be the end. But he will have to enter a blazing fire. Innahu kana fi ahlihi masroora. Verily, in the past life, he was with his family, and he was enjoying the life joyfully. He had his joys and rejoices in that world. From haram and from all forbidden means, he was earning, and he was gathering all the comforts of life and the luxuries and everything. So he has had his whatever was his share, he already had it in that world. In Nahu Kana fi Ali Masura, in Nahu Zanna Allah Yahur. He thought that he would never have to return to his Lord. Bala, why not? In Narabbahu Kana Bihi Basira. Surely his Lord was ever beholding him, seeing him, what he is doing. And what for? To reward him. But nay, I swear by the afterglow of sunset. You know the glow after sunset, the reddish light on the horizon. This is Shafak. And by the night, and what it envelops into it. Walqamak is a tasak. And by the moon, when it grows full gradually. Latarkabunna tabakan and tabak. Surely, mankind, you shall certainly rise from stage to stage. These four ayat, as I have come to understand them, you may not find this opinion anywhere, so. I am telling this is my opinion, that this, these ayats, they denote the renaissance of Islam. Islam came with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The advent of Islam, the oaths we had in Surah Al-Muddassir, Kalla wal qamar, wal layl is adbar, wa subh is asfar, inna hala ihdal kubar. Three oaths and in Nahala Ehd al Kubar. And this is the oath. Kalla wal Qamar. You know the teachings of the former messengers of Allah. They were like the light of the moon, which is very light. No intense light. But Layla is Adbar. There was a 600 years long night during which there was no Nabi, no revelation coming. No messenger of Allah. But now, Vasubhi is asfar. Now the son of the messengerhood of Muhammad has a reason. And it has enlightened, lightened the whole, this world. In Nahalaid al Kubar. Surely, surely, this advent of Muhammad is one of the biggest and mightiest things. Now the Prophet had said that after my death, Four periods of time come before the end of this world. First, Khilafa ala min hajin nabuwa. The pious caliphate. Caliphate of the pattern of nabuwa. The system which was established by Muhammad sallallahu was retained absolutely in the same form, with no difference whatsoever. But then he said, Summa yarfa Allah zasha yarfa when Allah will like He will lift away this caliphate. Summa takunu mulkan adwan. Then there will be a period of cruel kingship to which Allah Maqbal has denoted by the words Arab imperialism. 
the Umayyad period, the Abbasid period. It was not caliphate. Kinship. And there were cruelties inflicted upon people. What happened at Karbala? What happened at Harra? For three days and nights, the Medina of Muhammad, the city of Muhammad, was declared permissible for anything you do, for the army. Whatever you do, they suffered at the hands of the so-called Muslims. Then hundreds of Tabi'een were massacred, slain, killed by Hajjaj ibn Yusuf, and so on and so forth. But then the Prophet said this period will also come to an end. Then there will be the third period, that will be kingship with slavery. Summa yakunu mulkan jabriyan, and which now I understand, I don't say it, I can't say what the companions understood when the Prophet divided this kingship into two periods. Kingship, which is cruel, kingship with slavery. But now we can understand it was the period of the colonial rule. At least formerly, although they were cruel people, but they were Muslims. Babar was a Muslim, Akbar was a Muslim, so to say. Jahangir was a Muslim and so on and so forth. But then he became slaves to Queen Victoria, George VI, Edward VIII, and so on and so forth. So that was the third period. Then he said, Summa takunu khilafaka ala bin Hajin Nabuwa. Again there will be a period of khilafa ala bin Hajin Nabuwa. This period is now not very far off. Also the doomsday is not very far off. Innahum yarawnahu ba'idan wa narahu qariba. They see it, it as if it is very far off and we see it close by. It's in front of us. So this, the essence of Islam, real Islam, not this Islam of ours. This is no Islam. We are individually Muslims. We believe in Allah. That's all. Where is Islam? There's a hadith the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a time will come. La yabqa min al-Islam illa ismuhu. Wa la yabqa min al-Quran illa rasmuhu. Out of Islam, nothing will remain except its name. Out of Quran, nothing will remain except its script. The spirit is here. But true, true Islam, real Islam, practical Islam, will be revived. There will be a resurgence. There will be a revival. There will be a renaissance. And this time, this will cover the whole of the globe. I can't give you the detailed ahadith of the Prophet regarding this. But how this will happen, this is depicted here. فَلَاُخْسَمُ بِشْفَقْ Now actually what happened? What we have is, when the sun has gone down, there is some red light. Of Islam only we have this. Islam, son of Islam, has set. But only some light we find in the world of Islam. That is the afterglow of the sunset. And this very long night, you know, of the decadence of the Ummah, downfall of the Ummah, downtroddenness of the Ummah. But then, well, Kamar is at Tasak. Moon will rise and gradually, gradually, gradually it will be, become full. This process of revival of Islam and the nations of Islam is progressing stage by stage. There were some movements to begin with. They did some part. They contributed their bit. But then another movement came. The next generation. They are taking this standard a bit forward. The third generation, fourth generation. And during this 20th century, I can see at least in the Indian subcontinent, three generations have passed which are passing the standard and the, what should we say, the, the uh, torch, torch of Islam 
from generation to the other generation. But every generation is taking it upwards. The Tarkabunna, Tabakan and Tabak. The national movements, freedom movements, actually, they at least got for us freedom. When there is freedom, now it's easy for us to establish Islam. So there are movements, although we have not succeeded. Except for we may say Iran, but that is a Shia country. In any other country we have not succeeded. There is a success, but it has to be established. It's still, you know, very shaky. And all the kufr is, has gathered around it, and that is in Afghanistan. But Islam will be revived. And this is the prophecy of the Prophet. And gradually, this process is going step by step upwards. So what is to them? What's the matter with them? That they believe not. And when the Quran is recited unto them, they don't fall and prostrate. This is the ayah of Sajda. Instead of believing in our recitation of our ayat, these people who are disbelieving, they belie. Wallahu and Allah very well knows what they are gathering for themselves. Their deeds or the misdeeds should be said. Whatever they are gathering for the hereafter, Allah knows. For Bashir Alim. So, o Prophet Wasallam, give them the glad tidings of a painful chastisement. Except those who come to believe and do righteous deeds. For them shall be a reward which will be unending, continuous, forever, forever. <laughs>